north of Cuba and then this is going to drive its way close to the Tampa area and make landfall as we get into Wednesday evening. Please, I can't stress enough, this is a very life-threatening situation across parts of Florida where this moves on shore. If you are asked to leave, that means you're in a terrible spot. Somebody is asking you to leave your home, leave, just uh, do so. Listen to the authorities along the west coast of Florida if you were asked to leave. Uh, and as we get into central Florida, this is going to move right over. WFTV.com is now live streaming. I'll put a link to that. Uh, that will be your county by county resource in central Florida on WFTV. And I'll be, I'll be live on there uh, as we work our way into uh, tomorrow, uh, tracking the system as it continues to pro progress in. So again, good resources for you as we track this, trying to keep you as covered as possible. But uh, unfortunately, there's really been no good news over the last 24 hours. It's, it has uh, uh, progressed. It's gotten uh, worse for sure as far as uh, the intensity of this. Remember, track is easier to forecast. Intensity is very tricky. Now, I've made some changes to this. Not really big changes from what I showed you several days ago. I have up the winds. I've barely tweaked to the uh, track on this. Uh, so again, everything I've been showing you has been on track, except the winds now look to be even higher. I and mean, you can see it right now near Category 5 strength. It should be near Category 5 strength four or five over the next at least 24 hours. There should be a little weakening before this makes landfall near Sarasota up through uh, Tampa Bay, but that is all relative. When you're starting with a category five and you're going down to a category three, we're still talking a major hurricane, right? So major hurricane landfall near the Tampa area moving into the west coast, still could be down a little closer to Fort Myers, more likely a north of there, closer to Tampa, and then working right across uh, the peninsula of uh, Florida, right across central Florida, as a hurricane and emerging off the Space Coast, still as a hurricane. Now, my friends, in the northern Bahamas, it looks like the heaviest weather will be to the north, but I'll show you on Thursday and even Friday, we're going to get some gusty winds, and then it will be a tropical storm out here. And I want to get into Bermuda. There's a couple areas that could eventually impact Bermuda, so that landfall later on Wednesday. Uh, my track is in line with even what the uh, National Hurricane Center is showing. They have issued a uh, widespread hurricane watches out for much of the peninsula of Florida. More of that's going to be expanding. And a hurricane warning has been issued uh, by the authorities back into uh, Mexico, right along the northern edges of the Yucatan. That's for good reason. This has wobbled. The core of this will still stay just offshore, what I was showing you yesterday. But the intensity, it's gotten stronger. It's been a little wobbled to the south. So we're going to at least see the tropical storm winds moving in. And you can see here the intensity on this thing. Winds are 155 miles per hour right now. So we're looking at close to 250 kilometers an hour. In that, when you're dealing with winds around 150 to 160, the gusts are around 200 miles per hour. Now, I'm hoping it will eventually weaken a little bit before moving to Florida, no doubt. But that, those are the gusts. That's some incredible stuff right there. Uh, very close to Category 5. It is going to eventually clip Category 5 uh, 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 kind of a criteria as we go forward. Now, we get a look at the wind forecast. So let's start where this is going first. Again, this is going to skirt by the northern coast. Uh, and here are some of the uh, winds that we can expect. Now, as you get over toward uh, Merida, some of the winds will be around 70 miles per hour or 110 kilometers an hour. Now, if you're right on the water, though, right on the water, they could be higher. We could have some of the winds gusting over 80 miles per hour. So again, hurricane gusts are possible, the extreme northern sections. You get over toward Campeche, uh, not as much. Winds at 45 or 65 kilometers an hour. Heaviest weather will be to the north, extreme northern zones. Even in Cancun, we could get some gusts around 70 miles per hour or 110 kilometers an hour as well. Heaviest would be just to the north, uh, swinging up toward the Gulf of Mexico. So I wanted to start here first, again, getting clipped by tropical storm or even hurricane conditions, extreme northern sections of the Yucatan. So thank you for spreading the word about that so everyone is safe as this passes by uh, later today and tomorrow across the uh, Yucatan. You see the wind field right there. That is the uh, wind field uh, that is going to uh, clip by uh, the northern sections of the Yucatan. The wind field is really going to expand. So that takes care of what's going on first, kind of the immediate concern. The next concern is this big surge as this works in. Where this makes landfall and just to the north, north of it, but especially to the south of it, there's going to be a significant surge. That is an abnormal rise in the water that is going to move in. It's going to inundate the uh, coastline here. 
Now, unfortunately, this coastline still has piles of debris they're working to remove. This coastline has gotten hit so hard by Hurricane Helene uh, just uh, simply uh, just days ago, pretty much, as that worked its way up to the Big Bend and then did that devastation up toward uh, the Carolinas and parts of Georgia, even parts of uh, Tennessee. Uh, but a surge here of about five to 10 feet. Where it comes on shore, very close to the Tampa Bay area, there could be a surge of eight to 12 feet. That is a life-threatening surge right in through there. So again, if you are asked to leave, that's no joke stuff, right? We don't mess around with this. Um, I don't like storms. I do not hype storms. I'm telling you, uh, again, where this comes on shore, it is going to be a very bad uh, situation. That's why you don't want to be there. You don't want to be near the water as you get that abnormal rise of water as it moves in. Models pretty much in track. Again, just taking this right across the peninsula of Florida. Look how close they come. They keep the core of it, though, off the uh, northern end of the Yucatan and then work their way very close to the Tampa, Sarasota area, St. Petersburg, Anna Maria Island may take a direct hit from this, Bradenton watching that coming right on shore and at this point the wind field will expand so the entire peninsula of Florida will be dealing with tropical storm or hurricane conditions and then as we work our way into uh, the Bahamas at that point uh, it's going to be a big wind field, there will be some tropical storm conditions northern Bahamas. We're going to get some gusty winds Thursday, Friday. Uh, Freeport over toward New Providence got you covered. And then as this system kind of works off, there could even, some of it may try to hang together where we could get some gustier winds down the road for Bermuda. So the models, the bot, and I mentioned, I don't always look at the models. I look at the environmental conditions. The models have been off, and I want to show you why in a moment, uh, as far as the intensity goes. That's not uncommon though. The intensity is so hard to forecast for both me and the computers. Uh, and you can see here right now, uh, the models have it initializing as a category three, but this is closer already to a category five hurricane. So at least the next day or so, we're looking at a category four, category five, and then I'm hoping slight, slightly less before it makes a landfall near the Tampa area. American model, European model, in very good agreement. Now, whether it makes landfall to the south or more to the north, it's still gonna move right across the peninsula. So the peninsula of Florida is not escaping this. Landfall, according to the American model, very close to the uh, Tampa area with winds of 125 miles per hour. Very similar to the European model. The European model may be a touch to the south. Winds though 120 to 125. So looking at that major hurricane and then a tropical storm or hurricane sitting offshore as it passes by. So here's the American model, uh, just to give you a feel of the rain. You can see it here, the core of it right here, and you see how it just kind of nudges by, scraping by the northern coastline as we work our way into later today across uh, parts of Mexico. Then as we get deeper into our Tuesday, this is Tuesday morning, you see it right there. Cuba, we're going to be okay. If you have friends, family in Cuba, this is going to stay to the north of Cuba. Look at all this rain out ahead of it. I'll show you the European model in just a moment. Tons of rain out ahead of it, like what happened with Colleen up into the Carolinas. A lot of rain out ahead of it, really bad news. Ground is already saturated, setting the stage for a lot of flooding. Then as we get into Tuesday evening, nine o'clock on Tuesday, you see it here. And then going out on time, this is nine on Wednesday morning. At that point, it is going to be a major, powerful hurricane still. And then the heaviest weather starts to work in throughout the day on Wednesday across the peninsula of Florida. Uh, the American model is a little bit more to the north, but it does show that landfall right near the Tampa Bay area. It really hasn't changed much over the last couple days as far as the landfall, give or take. We'll see where it comes on shore, but a very large system moving right across central Florida, impacts in north Florida, and some of that rain into extreme southeastern sections of Georgia and the Carolinas. And you see the Bahamas. Now, while the core of this would be to the north by the time we get into uh, uh, Thursday, this is going to be a broad spin out here, which means we're going to get some gusty winds, which I'll be able to show you in a second. Now, this takes more of a northern route. We'll see how this takes place. Most of the models have this kind of hook off a little bit more to the east. This is a bit down the road, kind of what happens longer term with that. But here's the immediate concern with those winds. And you see some of these brighter colors showing up. That green shading there, there's actually that green shading in there. Those are the major category force winds of at least 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers an hour. This model is underdone. It's not picking up on how strong it is. That's why I caution the model. Sometimes the models are too strong and it goes the other way and people use that as hype. This time, uh, the models are actually showing a weaker scenario and we know they're a little bit off because this sucker has winds right now of near 160 miles per hour. But you see it nonetheless, you see here, this is by Wednesday morning. The wind field expands, that white shading right there, the tropical storm force winds really expand, the hurricane force winds expand. So a big wind maker as this moves in, of course, with the rain.